Hey everyone, this is Andrew at Plainview Farm, and in today's video, I finally get around to painting the shed. So this is the first time I have ever used an airless sprayer, and I'll tell you, it was a bit of a learning experience. It was an enjoyable learning experience. I'm using a Harbor Freight uh, airless sprayer. Um, I'm honestly not sure what brand this is. Uh, it's borrowed from my stepdad. He came over and was nice enough to kind of get things set up and show me how to use it. Once we got the thing going, it took me a minute or two, but uh, eventually I kind of figured out what worked best for me, the best uh, spray pattern method, however you want to say it, that, that worked best for me, and I pretty well took off from there. Now, of course, I did mask the areas that I didn't want to paint because Honestly, this thing will absolutely soak anything close to where you point it. Um, and that includes, you know, if it's just a little bit breezy, which actually this day wasn't too bad. The day before was really windy. We had planned to paint the day before this, um, but it was really windy. And, you know, using an airless sprayer like this, you're going to paint pretty much everything within... <laughs> Uh, uh, within the general area uh, because the wind will will blow the paint around. After all, you are spraying it on to, to your surface. So the only things that I ended up covering uh, were the windows and the skirt boards around the lean-to because that's, that's really all that I was concerned about. Everything else at some point is going to be covered up uh, probably by trim. Now, there are some things that I did that uh, <laughs> I definitely wouldn't advise. Um, I may not have always been the safest in the way that I did things. Uh, I'm not wearing a mask or anything like that, as you can tell in the video. Um, and, you know, at times I did in order to reach the peak of the roof stand on top of the ladder. I wouldn't advise that kind of thing. The kind of paint that I used was the Valspar Duramax, and it's a satin uh, finish paint. And we color match this to the siding on our house. It's the paint and primer all in one kind of stuff. Um, my siding, it is primed, but I wanted to try to get it in one coat if possible. And as I said, once I kind of figured out the best pattern for me, I was able to, to really pick up some speed. And I worked, you know, top down, uh, side to side. One thing I also tried to make sure that I did do was hit the edges of the panels really well, especially if they were edges that I had done some trimming or cutting on because I wanted to try to make sure that I got those sealed up really well. Again, this is the, the LP Smart Siding. Uh, the exterior finish is made to look a certain way. You know, this is uh, OSB type stuff. So I wanted to make sure, again, that, that I sealed up those edges because we don't want any water getting in them. We, we want to make sure that, that this siding is gonna last, hopefully for a really long time. But like I said, I work, you know, top to bottom, uh, side to side, uh, all the way around the building. But again, back to the paint, I did buy five gallons and I ended up using around four or maybe a bit less. One of the things that I really did have to watch during this whole process was I had to make sure that I was paying attention to those vertical grooves on the panels, and especially the grooves where two panels came together uh, and created a joint. It was easy for me to miss those spots because based on the angle that I was seeing it, the point of view that I had at the time, it was pretty easy to lose sight of 
areas that had been coated well and areas that had not. So I did have to kind of look back and forth a little bit, try to change that angle in order to make sure that I was getting a, a proper coat. And one of the things that I will have to do, uh, but I didn't do yet, is I will have to go back and, and do some touch up in some spots. As I said, I wanted to try to get this all in one coat, and so far I think I did. The paint laid down on the building really well. It, the siding took it really well. It covered really well. Like I said, I, I got the paint and primer because I wanted it to coat fairly heavy, and it didn't disappoint. So I started on the side of the building that is actually going to be the least visible and worked my way around the back and painted the front last because I felt like if I did it that way, hopefully I would have some idea of what I was doing by the time I got to the front and hopefully the, the front would look the best uh, because that's what most people are going to see, including myself. I'm probably not going to spend a whole lot of time looking at the back of the barn. So again, wanted to get the hang of it and make sure that I, I did my best work on the front. All in all, the total time it took me just to paint the building was probably just over an hour. Uh, this building, again, overall is 20 by 24. It is uh, 20 foot deep, uh, 24 foot wide. Again, a, a 12 by 20 building with a 12 by 20 lean-to. And I've stated in other videos that my goal was to make this look like an old barn. And actually one of the things that my wife said to me after I got the building painted was that it looked like it's always been there, which that's what I was going for. I wanted it to look like an old barn that had always been here. I also used the sprayer to paint my trim boards. And I'm going with white uh, also to match the house. I kind of debated about that a little bit. I know old barns generally didn't have trim, uh, at least in my neck of the woods they didn't. Uh, they were, and they were all painted the same color uh, if they did. But I decided you know, to dress it up a little bit with white trim. And so that's, that's what I did. I painted the trim white, the same kind of paint an exterior paint primer in one in order to, to get the paint you know, on there in, in one coat, which whenever I do put the trim boards on, I will have to go back and touch up nail heads. Uh, but you know, painting it before I put it up it sure makes things a whole lot easier. And the final verdict on this is, it is way better to use an airless sprayer than to use a brush or a roller. I generally hate painting, but this was actually kind of fun. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful. Uh, if you did, please hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.